This lesson is called Introduction to Distributive Party Property. And you don't have to copy anything down here, so just watch. And uh, all the main parts of everything you have to know how to do in this lesson are done in the second video. Um, the video actually called Distribution um, Part 1. Now the Distributive Property Part 1. Okay, so this one you just have to watch the idea and uh, all the main stuff will be put together in the next video. Okay, so back to the polynomial store. We use this analogy in another lesson. And this time, what's different about the bags from the polynomial store is that each bag contains the exact same items. So if I just open them up, you'll see that there's x plus 3 in both bags. And where the distributive property comes in is when you have the exact same thing in both bags. Well, for us, in both brackets. So what you're seeing here is an x plus 3 in both brackets. And what that looks like when we see it in a question uh, that we're doing is we'll see a 2 in front of the x plus 3. That's how we'll know we're dealing with the distributive property is there'll be some number in front of the brackets like that. And it says, oh, I've got two bags. I've got two sets of brackets of x plus 3. Well, we could do it the old way. And I'll do it the old way here. And then we're going to look for a shortcut, okay? So if we're doing two... Uh, bags of x plus 3, then we've got, uh, you know, in the first bag is an x plus 3, and then in the second bag is another x plus 3. And we've learned that um, if we want to do uh, collect like terms on two uh, sets of brackets like this, well, if it's adding, it's no big deal. Like, there's not a big problem here. We just go, okay, so it's x plus 3, and then another x plus 3. You, only, you have to watch out for subtraction, but for addition, life's pretty easy here. Those brackets are, are almost sort of meaningless when, it, when it's addition between the two brackets. And then I'm just going to collect like terms there. I see an x over here and another x over there. So I can add those together and get uh, 2x. There's my 2x. And then I get a 3 and another 3, and those add up to 6. And that's all pretty straightforward if you've been doing the other homework and the other lessons. But here's the shortcut. Here's the shortcut, and this is the part that's called the distributive property, is that we can find a way to jump right from here, this step here, all the way down to this step here, and skip all the steps in between. And if you take a look, maybe you can figure out what, what we can do here. So what's happened is 2 bracket x plus 3 has become 2x plus 6. So you could make the jump by just going, okay, I'll take this 2 out front, and I'll multiply it by the x in here. We often write these zeros when we're doing distributive property, even in later grades, like in, like in grade 12 or calculus. Some, lots of times you'll see calculus students writing those arrows in there to remind themselves to do the distributive property. And the distributive property says, okay, 2 times the x, I get 2x, and 2 times the 3, I get six, you know, so it's, it's a very nice shortcut all the way through. And I'm going to do this a couple of times in a row. So if you're like, eh, I sort of get it. Hey, that's okay. I'm going to do it three times in a row it's in the intro video here. So it's uh, we're really going to work on this distributive, distributive property here. Here's another one. Each bag contains the exact same items. That's when the distributive property kicks in is when each bag, well, for us, each set of brackets contains the exact same items. And so I can uh, turn this on here and see what's in the bags. Each bag is 2x plus 5 this time. So um, what, I'm, what I've got now is three bags. So it's going to be three bags of 2x plus 5. See, each set of brackets, each bag has the same polynomial in it. And so doing it the old way, I would have gone, okay, so there's a 2x plus 5 in the first brackets. And then there's a 2x plus 5 in the second brackets. And then there's a 2x plus 5 in the third brackets. And I can collect that of each one. So I'm not going to show that extra step this time. Because when it's addition, you don't need that extra step necessarily. You can just look at each bracket and go, okay, well, the first bracket has a 2x. The second bracket has a 2x. The third bracket has a 2x. And I can go 2x plus 2x plus 2x and get 6x. And then first bracket has a 5. Second bracket has a 5. Third bracket has a 5. And when I put them all together, I get 15. Okay, but what we want to talk about, if we're going to do the distributive property, is the shortcut, how to get from here right to here without that intermediate step. And here's the shortcut. You go, okay, take this 3 and multiply it by 2x, and you get 6x. And take this 3 and multiply it by 5, 
and you get the 15. If you get that, well, you're on your way. Yeah. The rest of this lesson, the rest of these videos might be just uh, watching for special cases. What happens when there's a negative? What happens when there's an X out front? You know, those kind of special cases. But that's basically the distributive property right there is what you've seen there. Okay, one more time, just to really hammer it home. A little quicker this time, just in case you're getting a little bored with this. Okay, so three bags, and each bag this time has it. 7y minus 10. Ooh, just starting a little bit with negatives here now. So what I've got here is three bags of 7y minus 10. Or if you want, three sets of brackets of 7y minus 10. Ooh, jumped on me there. So let's go back here. Three brackets of... Seven. Hey, it's jumping on me there. No problem, no problem. I'll just get rid of that set. That didn't go too well. And I'll switch over to a new one. Okay. Start again. Three brackets of 7y minus 10 equals, and I'll do all the steps here, even though you might know the shortcut. You might know what's going to come out of here, and that's fine. But I'm going to do all the steps here. So what I get is a bracket of 7y minus 10. Another bracket of 7y minus 10. Just imagine if that was an, uh, like an 11 out front or something like that. You certainly want, wouldn't want to be doing this if it was like a 11 out front. So we practice with these small numbers so we can come up with a shortcut so we don't have to do it with the big numbers. And so we want, uh, okay, so 7y and another 7y and another 7y, that's 21y. And then negative 10, subtract another 10, subtract another 10 is negative 30. But the distributive property says we could have got there by taking this 3 and multiplying it by the 7y to get the 21y, and then a 3 multiplied by negative 10 to get negative 30, which we write as subtract 30. And if that seems a little weird, weird that I've gone back and forth between negatives and subtracts there, it's totally allowed. Yeah, you're going to learn in, in, in uh, as we go along in these chapters that that move is, is totally allowed. We can think of this as subtract or negative, whichever one makes sense for what we're doing. If that really bothers you, uh, think of it this way. Um, this is subtract 10, and I'm multiplying it by 3. So I'm subtracting 10 three times, so I'm subtracting 30. So it, it works. You can you can think of it either way, and you get the same answer. Okay, so you don't have to write anything down from there. Now move on to uh, what's called distributive part property part 1, and watch that video. And it's got some stuff to, to write down. You might want to even print out the, uh, the word file first so that you have that ready to rock and roll, and you can just fill in the blanks. You don't have to copy out the whole thing. Okay?